earlier this year had the opportunity like I do every year to fish with Captain Brandon Branch. And we did a show in Steenhatchee, Florida, and it turned out to be one of the most epic episodes of Flats Class, maybe of all time. Well, him and I were at a, a local tackle store here in Crystal River at Sodium Fishing, and we were just having a powwow with John and Casey there, and said, if you get stuck or something like that, and you want a good show that we could do with maybe a bass bait or something unusual, he goes, you might want to go back to steam hatchy and try that because I've been having a lot of luck with spoons and blade baits like chatter baits and stuff like that. I go, will they hit a spinner bait? He goes, I think they will. So we went back there. As you can see, the sun's a little bit higher up than normally when we're getting started, but we're waiting on that tide to get up so we can get up on the rocks and the flats and uh, don't have to wait so long and we're able to get right on them. Well, and today I want to try out a brand new spinner bait that we actually launched at last year's iCast. And I want to see if we can catch the fish on bladed baits. I've got a couple of soft plastics for backups, but between the Aquadream spoons and the new bullseye spinner bait, I got a good feeling about this. I think we'll be able to make something work. Big redfish, <laughs> hopefully some trout, a little mixed bag. I and, definitely uh, think we can get some big trout, especially with those soft plastics I brought. We're gonna make a pretty long run up to the north today. We're gonna run 15 to 18 miles before we start fishing. So it should, uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a ride, but it'll be worth it once we get there. And I haven't fished that far north before, so it'll be something different. Absolutely. like a red. One of the biggest keys today, we were having to work it really slow. You wanted to roll that spinnerbait right on the bottom. We got hung a lot, but that was just a part of it. You just wanted to keep, you can pop those spinnerbaits off, so you just wanted to keep it moving really slow, and it made a huge difference, because you would feel the first couple bites, and you'd really have to wait for them to bite it. They were biting a little bit off, but if you just be patient and let them bite it, it you'd get them. Thing hit it four or five times before he got a hold of it. I wonder if he bounced that, that, that spinner on it a few times. <clears throat> Decent fish. Not bad at all. Catch one more like that, you'll be having me over on the bullseye bait. Beautiful fish. Finn touched the water and he was gone. He took off like a bat out of hell. Right there. I mean, he, he just absolutely stopped it. Woo, that's a good one. I'm gonna help you land that one, all right? Yeah. The one behind him was even bigger. I big, saw the one behind he, him. He was, was even bigger than him by another, a couple inches. Yeah, I was going to say was five stud. or six inches bigger. I'm going to try to get him on this side if I can. That's pretty, no slouch, though. Yeah, he's pretty much doing whatever he wants to do. Woo! Nice one. <laughs> oh. There's the top slaughter. Yeah, it is. That's a good one. Makes for a great search bait when it's moving oh, like this. And like this. And what, what a lot of anglers don't understand is when you got wind like this, it makes it darker on the bottom. That is a gorgeous fish. Absolutely. Got pumpkin colored, really bright colored fish. I find when they're really bright like that, that means they're feeding. I mean, those dark fish that are just laying on the bottom, these ones that are really bright like that. And this lit up tail. Water's got a little tannin stain to it. Yep. Boy, he's beautiful. Gosh, they don't get any better looking than that. Who would have guessed? Spinnerbait fishing.
This time, even though it was just a few months apart, this time when we went to Steenhatchee, Florida, the cool thing about it is the conditions were totally different. Now we're fishing a time when it's warmer and it's way windier and the tide is much higher. The spinnerbait was really a good call, a smart call because it allowed us to, in that depth of water with those type of windy conditions, really expand the strike zone and really cover a ton of water and still catch fish. Hey, right there, you see the water shaking? The water's kind of shaking right in there. Right in there. Got him. I told you. Called that <laughs> I told you. You seen that fish? <laughs> Even with this chop, if you look for that little tiny shake. Yeah, just makes something that's going against the grain. I cranked that thing like two times and yeah. he just you were in, and you could reach him. Keeps trying to dig his head in there and get on them rocks. I'm gonna come underneath you there real quick. Okay. Nope, maybe nope. not. It's going back that way. Might have you snag this one. He's a big one. All right. Actually, he's hooked pretty good. Really good. Man, he fills the net. Absolutely fills the net. That is an over there. That's a good one. Yeah, what a fish. <laughs> that is a stud. That is what I'm talking about. That is a good heavy fish. I mean, lots of, lots of strong, you know, flexing going on right now. I mean, he's fresh. Absolutely fresh. It doesn't get any better than that right no, there. I it does not. You. Awesome. All right, and he's gonna go. Not happy with you Gave at all. Give me a tail slap there at the end. <laughs> so most of our targets today with the higher water, we were looking for really hard bottom off the points of the Spartina grass, which would create a current. And we would just work up and down the rock edges. We would start way out and then just work all the way in. That was a big key, but we were looking for mullet almost the whole time. Cause you can kind of gauge where the fish are going to be when you see the mullet jumping. They were just a touch off of the mullet on the lower water and then when that tide got up if you saw the mullet jumping you could go to those mullet and that's where you would find your bites there he is whoa like i said spinner bait pretty doggone good search bait especially in these conditions we're fishing primarily about three feet of water and we're slow rolling it so it makes contact with the rocks on the bottom. And I mean, it, it's been pretty regular today. Hammering them pretty good. <laughs> it's kind of cool to watch them swimming around with a spinner bait in their mouth. You might ask what trailer we're using. We're using a three inch Z-Man Minnows. This is the bad shad color. We've also been using the pinfish color a little bit because it kind of matches the color of the water. But this bicolor gives us a little bit more visibility from a greater distance because it's more of a bicolor bait. There's a lot of blue and, and pink and, and a lot of glitter in this gives it a very scaly fishy look, but you get plenty of throb from that spoon. So I'm gonna put this guy back in the water. I'm gonna get back after it. When we went to our second spot before we went back to plan A, there was a lot of bait fish. There was a couple creeks there that were flowing out a little bit cleaner water than what we were actually fishing. 
So there was a lot of mud and then where those creeks came out, it was very clean and there was a lot of bait. So I think that's what was positioning those fish there wanting to bite. <laughs> you almost like you have to walk them on the hook. What do you have? You ain't gonna believe this. I have a triple tail. <laughs> I have a triple tail. I can see tail. jumping, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, that's our sight fishing wow. fish, and you don't even sight fish them, you just blind cast them here. Oh my. I was just asking you something like that the other day. Got them on the goat, too. Yeah, got them on a bass bait. Well, these are both bass baits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a combo right here. Uh, no doubt about it. Black and red, roulette fishing. Oh. Black and red. <laughs> My guys at Z-Man, when they find out that they built that bait for, for green fish, I can put him back in, and you ended up catching the black fish, <laughs> they are gonna be like, what? <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. A few casts later, I picked the spinner bait back up and threw in a school of mullet that I saw working. We're throwing long and we're throwing inside. We're throwing long, we're throwing inside. And I'm fighting a fish and I just release the fish and he throws inside and it hits the bank, falls off the bank and he's reeling it and bam, hits it and it runs. And he goes, I don't think this is a redfish. And if it is, it's the biggest redfish we've caught. <laughs> Clobbered it. Biggie. I don't know what I've got here. If it's a trout, you better get the net. I'd like to see that happen. Of course, you have been known to catch stuff that we don't know what it is. What the f is this? It's huge, whatever it is, I'm telling you. I just seen it. All right, let's, uh, let's find out what it is. It's not, or it didn't have a red back, I'm, I promise you. It's a snook or a trout. If it's, it ain't a trout, there's no way. It's gotta be a snook. I'm rooting for a trout. Big, Big snook. snook. Big snook. Big snook. Spinnerbait snook. Woo! Oh yeah, baby. Biggin'. Woo hoo! Ha ha ha! Holy cow! I was like, what in the heck have I got a hold of there? Woo. What a begging. That is a chunk. <laughs> oh. We're not in snook territory, so the first thing that came to mind was a big <laughs> trout. And, well, that wasn't the case. You can't beat that. <laughs> oh my. Good Lord. I mean, it's a chunk, guys. It's got a way, feels like about 10 pounds, Maybe. 11 pounds, 12 thinking, pounds. Yeah. Somewhere 10, between the 10 and 12 pound range. Beautiful fish. I think he was 33 or 34 inches. And for how far north we are, that is a big surprise to me. I've never seen one this far north. So that's a good sign that these fish are really being able to adapt to the weather and climate changes and things like that. And they're moving further north and it's gonna be a great fishery here in a few years, I'm sure. Who, who? would believe that you could catch a snook on a spinnerbait. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable.
The episode we did with Captain Brandon Branch on redfish and spinnerbaits, well, we couldn't have done it without the Z-Man Bullseye Spinnerbait. This is redfish tough. It is not the everyday bass spinnerbait. You can't show up with a wimpy spinnerbait when you're catching that many fish, especially when a snook might show up. So we use the new bullseye. We put the trailer on with a three and sometimes a four inch Z-Man minnows, diesel minnows or the minnows. And I've got that rigged up on one of my favorite rods, the Shimano Terramar Double X. Now, there's two rods that we use. We use the Shimano Terramar Double X in the medium action in the seven foot and in the six foot nine. Now, the six foot nine has a little bit more thump to it. And what I mean by that, it's a little heavier action really than a medium action. It feels heavier and it allows you to drive the bait, the bulky baits through the wind. Does a really good job, great for hook sets. Uh, I have this Cronart, this is the 150 HG. Uh, I have this loaded up with 20 pound Power Pro braid. That's what I prefer to throw on most of these low profile bait casting setups. We also use the Corrado DC, which is an excellent reel, especially for you guys just getting in to swing in a bait casting rod because it virtually eliminates probably 75% of the backlashes you're gonna have. So when you're challenged with tough conditions, fish are spread out because the tide's higher, or you've got windy conditions where you really need to broadcast a flashy bait, nothing is going to outfish a bullseye spinnerbait. I hope this puts more fish in your boat. The Big Bend area in general, because we were running up and down that day fishing a lot of different zones, is so beautiful. It's so much the feel of old Florida. You know, no palm trees, more pine trees, more Spartina grass, and yes, plenty of big rocks. <laughs> but that guarantees that that fishery will always be a solid one because I don't care what you're doing. You're not running around there unless you've got a little local knowledge. My ribs are starting to hurt a little bit. <laughs> That's when you know you've been fishing. Got one good bite. Begging. All right, I'm going in behind you to see I'll if we can I'll power pull down up. too if you can. Which way is he running? He's just kind of right here in front of me, just okay. wallering, trying to get his head in the ground. That's a good one. Come back around here. That's a good one. He's gonna do what he wants to do. Die. My bad. Last, he away. blasted that. I'm gonna throw it right back in and see if I can get him. Yep, go right ahead. And he didn't get that steel. Got him. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Double header, baby. Yeah, come underneath you. That's gonna be a good one. Hell yeah. That is what I'm talking about. Whew. Megan? Yeah, good one. I don't want to let him get his head down. I, that first retrieve, I felt him bump it, and I knew he was right there. Tell every client to reel your tip down to the water so you have control over the fish and I'm not even taking my own advice. <laughs> Sundays. I, I hate when you get up high on them, you can't control them, but if you can keep that tip low to the water, you can control the fish. It's a good one. <laughs> he didn't like he saw the he saw blue coming. Bullseye is right on target, huh? Today it is. Bullseye is right on target today. As the right. last time we were here, it's really scattered <laughs> them out and uh, made a difference. Honestly, Captain, I think this is the best way to end it. I mean, I mean, we, do we double up with two top of the slot, if not bigger than slot fish. I think this is where we call it a day. Absolutely. I mean, it's been unbelievable. It has. I mean. I just wanted to go test drive these spinner baits because I really haven't got to use them. And if you go test drive them in Louisiana, you're going to catch fish. Yeah. You need to test drive them in Florida waters. And I think today we well, hit the target just perfectly. That's exactly right. 
Let's put them in, and then let's think about going and getting something to eat. Or a cold beer. Or a cold beer. <laughs> Both of them will work. Brandon Branch is the guide that does not look forward to the time when the boat goes back on the trailer. He loves it from the second he hears it roll off and the transom splashes into the water, and he loves it the whole day, and the worst sound he has is when the winch is going and you're winding it up again. Because he knows he's gotta go home and he can't fish until the next morning. He's that guy, and he's driven. And we always have unbelievable episodes when Brandon's part of the show, and People in my profession, we've been doing this for so long, there's an intuition when we know who the next guys are. Brandon Branch is one of those anglers who's one of the next guys. And you want to help them get to the next level. I mean, you want to pick the guys that are going to eventually replace you. Brandon's one of those guys that a lot of you guys that enjoy Flats Class will enjoy watching Brandon whether it's on streaming television or YouTube or whatnot, you'll be sold.